I flew out of Washington this afternoon, and as soon as we started out, they notified us that the plane had mechanical difficulties, and that kept us on the ground a good while. And finally, we took off and landed, and whenever I land after mechanical difficulties, <laughs> I'm always very happy. Now, I don't want to give you an impression that as a Baptist preacher, I don't have faith in God in the air. It's simply that I've had more experience with him on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, everybody. Happy Holiday. Welcome. Happy Holiday. To Happy Life Studios. May the calendar keep ringing. Happy Holidays to you. We're here to make your Happy Holidays even happier. Have your holidays. Have your holidays. Have your holidays. Have your holidays. <laughs> what is up, Happy Lifer? Thanks for joining us today. We are so happy that you did. And like I said earlier, Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You know we got to do a podcast on Martin Luther King Jr. Day because you guessed it. We are the official podcast of the holidays. And even if we weren't, we should do one on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I mean, if I was a podcaster, and if your podcast is about inspiration or motivation, I mean, how do you let a day like Martin Luther King Jr. Day pass? How do you let a man like Martin Luther King Jr. pass without doing something on this man. This man was inspirational, motivational. This man was incredible on so many levels. And in case you didn't pick up how that joke in the beginning lines up with Martin Luther King Jr. Day, that was actually Martin Luther King Jr. telling that joke. It was on The Tonight Show in 1968. And many might have caught that, many might not have, because when you think of Martin Luther King Jr., you don't think of a guy that's humorous. His cause His life was about something so serious. I don't know how he could have been a man of humor. And I don't know how he could have survived that, uh, living that for for all those years, all that that movement, that revolution that he was a part of. Uh, How do you be funny in all that? Except for the fact that how do you not have a sense of humor in all that? That's probably, honestly, what kept him going through all those years of that movement, of that revolution is a sense of humor. I mean, he's the poster child for Happy Life Studios because a a definition of happy life, according to us, not according to other people, but according to us, that's why our logo is even different. It's not a yellow smiley face like all the other happy faces out there, but it's green, which means go. It's got a tuft of hair standing up. It's got a smirk instead of a smile. All those things, we've talked about that in the past. I'm not going to talk about them right now, except for to say that our logo is different because our version of happy is different. And it lines right up with Martin Luther King Jr., which is a happy life is a lifestyle where you get and keep happy no matter what the circumstances are, where you secure and sustain joy in every situation. And Martin Luther King Jr. telling that joke on The Tonight Show in 1968, which was the same year that he was assassinated, just goes to show you in his last days, he was just a man that that had a sense of humor. I think that's what caused him to stay doing what he did. We can be happy despite the sadness that's all around us. In fact, Martin Luther King Jr. was asked if he could be alive at any time. When would he pick to be alive? If he could change whenever he would live, when would he pick to be alive? And he picked the day that he was living. He talked about all the other civilizations and times that that were great times to go back to. He says, but if I were to ask God for a few days to live, it would be right now. And he said, I know there's all sorts of racism, segregation, and sorts of bad things going on in the world right now, ugly things going on in the world right now. But he still chose that day, the day that he was alive. I love that mentality. That's another happy life mentality. He sees all the ugly, and yet he says, but this is also a great time to be alive. And I think that that's what we need more of these days, is that there's an awful lot of ugly out there, 
But there's also an awful lot of good out there, like we talk about a lot on here, and we just need to start highlighting that, and that's why we put out the podcast. That's why we put out social media, because we're trying to flood the social media, the the airwaves, the internet, with happy, with hope, with more of the other side of the story. And so you would help us greatly if you shared our stuff or liked our stuff, shared it with friends that you know of that might be going through some of the same issues that that podcast or that social media was was really about. And all we can do is what we can do, right? So we put stuff out to try to make the world just a little bit happier of a place, just like Martin Luther King Jr. said, I would choose to be alive in the moment I'm living in right now because I know the world is full of a lot of ugly junk, but it's also full of a lot of exciting, great potential and stuff that's going on. And if you think about it, If he wasn't alive during that time, I mean, he was made for that time. All that ugly is what gave Martin Luther King Jr. one of his purposes of living. There's more than just his purpose of what what he did with segregation, racism, and uh, changing our world in those areas, but just his family, his friends, the world he was a part of, you know, our purpose sometimes isn't just some great big grandiose thing. Sometimes our purpose is to make somebody smile today, you know, to make somebody's day a, a little bit better, to just live our life thinking about other people. So we go hand in hand with Martin Luther King Jr. He was a fantastic, amazing human being. I mean, not only did he have a sense of humor, like we've already talked about, but Did you know that he went to college at the age of 15, 15 years old, and he's in college. He graduated from college at 19 years old. (laughs) He was the youngest man at that point to ever receive a Nobel Peace Prize. He was Time Magazine's Man of the Year. He had 20 honorary doctorates. I mean, this guy, (laughs) I mean, his life was just an amazing life. What an amazing human being he was. Uh, so, which is why we're doing a podcast on him. Not to mention that in 11 years, he traveled over 6 million miles and spoke over 2,500 times. And most of those were without notes or a manuscript. <laughs> That's basically, if you were to speak every day without taking a break, no break on the weekends, every day you did a speech And trust me, speeches can wear you out. They can tire you out, especially when you're speaking on the topic that Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about. The message was him. That's why he didn't need notes or manuscript, because he was the message. The message was embedded deep within him. So when he talked, he just didn't read from notes. He emotionally got involved because he was that message. And trust me, man, when you're into a speech like that, it will drain you. Some have said that, many have said, actually, that when you share a speech emotionally like that and you share it from your heart, it'll drain you like an average eight-hour workday. And trust me, I know I speak at live events and I speak in front of my computer and podcasting and videos and stuff. And man, there are times when I get done speaking and I am just wiped out. Well, imagine 2,500 speeches in 11 years. If you were to not take a break and share a speech every day and not take a day break, no weekends, nothing, just every day you shared a different speech, a different speech, not the same one, every day you shared a speech, it would take you almost seven years. (laughs) That's seven years of speeches he put into 11 years. That is unbelievable. All because he had a dream. In fact, one of his speeches, his famous speeches, was was about that. I have a dream. I have a dream. And Martin Luther King was driven so much, his life was taken from him. Did you know that 10 years prior to his assassination, somebody else tried to assassinate him where he was doing a book signing? And he he held no ought against that person. A man that changed the world without using violence. Unbelievable. This man was... He deserves a year's worth of podcast. I mean, this guy changed the world. And I think it's cool that his holiday, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day, is celebrated right now in the middle of January. 
because right now is right around the time. I, I talked to a happy lifer the other day, and he came across some research. I didn't find out or I fact-checked his research or anything. I trust him, but and, and it, it makes sense what he said. He said that the average New Year's resolution doesn't make it beyond three weeks. And we all talk about New Year's resolutions at the end of December and the beginning of January, but we don't talk about it in the middle of January. And we should. We should because this is the time that we are going to possibly let the dream die. Two or three weeks into January, that's when many of our dreams die. And this is when our coaches, our motivators, our whatever should be talking about New Year's resolutions right now. Two or three weeks in because your dream is important. And it doesn't deserve to die. Did you know, here's another amazing fact about Martin Luther King Jr. That James Earl Ray, the guy that was convicted for killing Martin Luther King Jr. Was later on exonerated, found innocent. And he was found innocent because the family of Martin Luther King Jr. (laughs) And I think it was in 1999, the family went after the government and said, retry this guy. <laughs> so yeah, this is what I'm saying, that the the family of Martin Luther King Jr. is the one that demanded that James Earl Ray get another trial. They said, not only do we not hold any odd against this guy, but we don't think he's the guy that did it. They think he was a part of a conspiracy. And so they had a trial and he was found innocent. Not only was he found innocent, but the jury only deliberated for an hour to find that out. James Earl Ray said he was guilty. And a couple days later, two or three days later, he recanted that and said, I didn't do this. And even though he had a right to a retrial, the state never gave him a retrial. He asked eight times for a retrial and the state never gave it to him. So finally the family jumped in there and said, we demand a retrial for this guy. I mean, It was crazy. His gun, James Earl Ray's rifle, was in a box left in the middle of Main Street. And right by that box was his radio from prison with his prison identification number etched into the radio. And those just happened to be left in the middle of Main Street where Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. I mean... Even an imbecile, if he's going to try to kill somebody, is not going to leave his rifle in a box with the radio with his identification etched in the middle of the street. Are you are you kidding me? That's why it only took the jury an hour to deliberate because he was he was innocent. James Earl Ray did not kill Martin Luther King Jr. And I love that because Martin Luther King Jr. just weeks before he was assassinated, just. Like three weeks before he was, two or three weeks before he was assassinated, he quoted in in the beginning of one of his speeches, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I mean, I wonder if if that ever bothered James Earl Ray sitting there in prison going, I thought the truth will set me free. Well, I told the truth and I'm not free, but he became free later on. And Martin Luther King Jr. lived by those words that actually came from the Bible. He was a, a Baptist preacher. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He lived by that. James Earl Ray was not the one who killed Martin Luther King Jr. He was not the one who killed Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. And you know what? Even though Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, his dream was not. And that's important in the middle of January because you need to hold on to your dream. It's exactly why I put one more week of our Happier Holidays intro in there. You're probably thinking enough of Christmas already, but this is the holidays, not just Christmas. It's happier holidays. And we're still talking about the new year here. It's important that you do not give up on your dream because your voice matters, your life matters, your dreams matter. We all have dream killers chasing us, trying to assassinate our dream, people, life, or things. Busyness, stress, All these things want to assassinate our dream. We can't let them. Another fact I heard from that same happy lifer, he had heard a a speech, and so he had heard some of the stuff from him. So I'm going to kind of botch this a little bit, but 
he said that only 8% actually sits down and, I mean, a lot of people do New Year's resolutions and goals and things like that. And I really highly recommend you go back the last last several podcasts and listen to them talking about, you know, our, our we, we've got a different angle, not only on happy, but on how to do our New Year's resolutions and dreams and stuff like that. I think there's some really good material in there that would help you out. Like if you're at this point, it would be good to go back and listen to them, even if you've already listened to them in the middle of January here, because this is the time that a lot of dreams die, a lot of resolutions die, and I think that that's tragic, and I think we just need to revisit that. And that's what this happy lifer was saying. He was saying that only 8% to what he heard this other guy speak, only 8% of people actually sit down and plan out their how they're going to accomplish their dream, um, what's causing them to not accomplish their dream. You know, sit down and actually kind of go deeper. Don't just have New Year's resolutions and hope they're going to happen. I mean, I just read this the other day from another happy life that talked about happy isn't just going to show up on your step. It's not just going to show up and say, let's be happy today. You have to choose to be happy in the same way you choose to have a resolution. You have to choose to fight for that resolution. You have to choose to not let that resolution die because that thing that wants to kill your dream, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. James Earl Ray did not kill Martin Luther King Jr., at least according to that jury. There's a book actually written on it called Who Killed Martin Luther King Jr. that was put out in 1997. So that's why we're still holding on to happier holidays because we're still talking about dreams because your dream is important. So we're going to talk about that at the time that a lot of our dreams are assassinated. And here's a cool deal. Is that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, but his dream was not. And this is something for us to think about too. And there's nothing wrong with changing resolutions either, by the way. You don't have to hold on to it just because you picked it. Maybe a couple weeks into January, you're going... Uh, I think I can come up with a better resolution. And maybe even after this podcast or thinking about Martin Luther King Jr., um, it might happen too. But Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream didn't die when he died because his dream was bigger than himself. His dream wasn't about him attaining glory or fame or achieving more of this or doing more of this. His dream was about other people. He saw the needs of other people that were in despair that needed to be free. He talked about freedom all the time because his dream was about freedom. And some of us want, maybe we want financial freedom. We want, you know, healing. We want physical freedom. We, all of us want freedom. All of us want happy, really, for the most part. I, I can't imagine anybody not. But when you look for it in other people, when you make someone else happy, you'll be happy too. And so when it comes to our resolutions, let's not let them die, number one, because your resolution is important, your dream is important. So let's not let them die. Let's keep looking at them. Let's keep planning out what could possibly try to assassinate. What's my thing trying to assassinate my dream? Is it stress? Is it busyness? Is it something that somebody else has said? There's all sorts of dream killers out there. But when your dream is about helping other people, it lives on, just like Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream did. And I think that's something to take away from Martin Luther King Jr. Day, is that your dream is important. So don't let it die. Don't let that thing, that thing that's trying to assassinate your dream, isn't really the thing. It's not really the thing that's trying to kill it. The thing that usually kills our dreams is when we forget about them. That's why we have a holiday with Martin Luther King Jr. Day because his life was so powerful. He changed the world so much. We want to do a holiday so we don't forget about him. And usually the things that assassinate our dream is us. We forget about it. Or we don't think about it. We don't work on it. We don't take the time to plan out how could we accomplish this dream. Your dream is valuable, so it deserves to be worked on maybe retweet, maybe bring some other people in your life into your life to help you accomplish this dream, to help you plan out that dream. Because those dreams are what make our world a better place. So thank you, Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you for your life. Thank you, family of Martin Luther King Jr. and all those people who helped keep him going. 
with that powerful message that he had. Your life is valuable, and so is your dream. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. And you will be happy too. Remember, life is by far means perfect, but that doesn't mean it can't be happy. I think Martin Luther King Jr. would agree with that. Steve Ace. Because that's how he lived.